test here and uh, that's what we're looking at on the gauge but more importantly out the breathers where we saw oil this side and that side as well as the dipstick I'll be quiet so you can hear it they are all just uh, leaking very badly and since that's where the oil came out, that's kind of what we thought was going to be the case. I don't know. Okay, hold it. You ready? Mm hmm So there's 30, 40. Let me see how this is right up there, too. That's yep. the way it should be. So that's a decent-looking cylinder now. So we've got 50, say we got 55 going in and the cylinder is measuring 51 or so. So that's holding much more compression than the last one. back at it and I finally have some parts so if you don't recall this is what happened to my piston from 
running WRX timing on my EG33. So that is not advisable and I honestly just wasn't thinking when I did it. So I didn't have any problems at the lower gear ratios, but once I swapped in the longer gear ratios, I found myself in boost and under load a lot more. And I think that's essentially what led me to this so quickly. I think I would have been there eventually, but so just a quick recap, um, obviously cracked a piston in the shore block and everything's disassembled and um, what I've done is I've taken a piston out of my old shore block, which is right over here. We pulled one of those out and I actually took a few tries to find one that I liked, but once I did find one that I liked, I basically just sent it off to have it molly coated just like all my other pistons um, this can prevent you know just wear from the side skirts anywhere that was already there this will alleviate that is the idea and hopefully negate any piston slap I didn't have any with uh, any of the other pistons in the short block so figured might as well have the same thing done here I could have just thrown it in but you know why have one different that's my theory and it wasn't very expensive it probably cost about as much to ship to Charlotte and back as it did to just you know do the coating itself I think all in all it was about 50 bucks to do one I remember it being less than a hundred to do six so there you go but uh, I have it now and it's back and I've installed the rings from right directly from the old piston so I was lucky enough that that didn't do anything to the sidewall in the engine. It just, these two pieces were still uh, sitting in there. And uh, they were lodged in place not until I took the rings out did these actually fall out. So, interesting that is how it went down. But everybody knows with these type of pistons, this is what you get when you have too much timing, too much boost, too much heat and it's only a matter of time. It is curious that it's always number six or I believe number four. It's always the back driver's side piston that it always happens to. Um, at least first anyhow. I've seen that uh, to be a pretty common thing. I know that getting back to a reasonable amount of timing in this 10 to 1 compression engine should prevent this from happening in the future. And what I'll also do is possibly use my boost controller. I actually wired one up way back when I was doing my wiring harness so I have that just chilling and uh, it's held in with this handy dandy zip tie so I do have it all wired up I've tested that the boost controller works and uh, now it's really just my wastegate actuators do not support um, my boost controller so I'm getting some dual port wastegate actuators that I can you know change I think from 5 to maybe 15 psi so that will help prevent anything like this from happening in the future. Consider going straight E85. I don't think my injectors are quite large enough to do that though. Uh, these are 550cc Dietschworks injectors and if my math is right I need some maybe like 750s to make a similar amount of power on E85. So basically gonna try to stick it out with the 91 octane that we have here in the great state of Minnesota and uh, hopefully we don't have any more of these problems. I'm going to back off my timing to something like 15 degrees versus the 19 to 20, even 21. Uh, that was the cell that caused this problem. So for those of you out there wondering what timing advance you can run on a factory EG33 for an extended period of time and not have too much detonation such that it cracks a ringland on your piston. I think the answer is somewhere between 18 and 21 degrees of advance. So I did that experiment for you. No need for you to do that in the future. You're welcome. But you know it's actually kind of a cool thing to have the engine back out. There's some uh, oil lines that I was able to tidy up. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of uh, cleaning up the engine bay which is nice. Unfortunately now it's winter time so we will have snow out on the roads. And what I've done is actually picked up some snow tires for my car. These are just uh, WRX rims from 2002-2003. Uh, 
And I actually got a set of used snow tires that look reasonable. Um, measured them all out, they look good. I did have to run three millimeter spacers to clear my four pots, but now that they're on there, no problem, they clear. I can show you what they look like, just so you have an idea. This is the three millimeter spacer. Kind of like that. No big deal, it just gives it enough offset so those WRX wheels will clear these uh, 06, 07 WRX four pot brakes. Lots of emptiness right here. So now the game plan is reassemble this engine with the new piston and profit. Make more boost, have more fun. Hopefully if you guys wanted to know what this thing sounded like, uh, you can go to my Instagram. It's just easy on cars. And you can see a poll that I did with the new transmission. Um, maybe, maybe like three to 5,000. It sounds pretty cool. With the new muffler on there, it's pretty quiet, but you can still hear the turbo sounds, which is nice. Um, yeah, it's overall seems like a civilized car. Now to just get it back together and not break it with my tuning inabilities. So. Here we go.